Hello everybody, I've done a couple of videos on predation at this point and this is now my fourth video on predation. If you haven't seen any of the other three I will link them in the cards or down below and I recommend you check them out beforehand. Now today we are going to look at predator avoidance. Now I've mentioned it a couple of times in my previous videos where I've gone over the relationship between predator and prey. I have gone over a more generalised look at predators and types of predation and I've looked at herbivory. Now to jump straight in I'm going to look at the methods of predator avoidance and how prey avoid their predators and this is going to be quite a long one. So first thing prey defences is the most important thing because of course prey needs to defend themselves against predators and prey defences come in two parts. They are primary defences which reduce the encounter rate with predators and secondary defences which reduce the attack and reduce capture of them to the predators. Now primary defences consist of three different mechanisms are camouflage, posematism and mimicry. Now primary defences will reduce the encounter rate from the predators and, and there are also three different mechanisms in secondary defences which consist of mechanical, chemical and behavioural. Now we're going to look at primary defences first and then we're also going to look at secondary defences a little later on. So that's quite a lot right to begin with but to do a quick overall, primary defences are camouflage, posematism, and mimicry. Secondary defences are mechanical, chemical and behavioural. Now there are two more things in which case we need to look at when looking towards these defences and they are constitutive, meaning that they are always present and induced in which case they are done through a reaction. So those are the terms we are going to be using, those are what we are going to look at. Now to begin with primary defences we are going to start with camouflage. This is also called Crypsis and it is the ability to avoid detection of another animal. Now this is my secret process but is also done as avoidance for other animals. Now this is done in a lot of different species and is probably the one out of the three we know of the most in the animal kingdom. Now examples of this are caterpillars, um, spiders and even some mammals do it. Now one of the most popular mammalian species which engage in camouflage is the snowshoe hare which goes from brown to white in order to camouflage against the snow and against the dirt once the snow has melted in the summer season. This however can be a problem with climate change altering the dynamics of the weather. This can cause a phenological mismatch. Now this is because climate change is shifting the snow phenology. Quick mention, phenology is the timing of events such as snow coming and when the rabbits will change their fur colour. Now climate change can potentially create a great mismatch as the temperatures may melt the snow before the snowshoe rabbit has shed its white fur, removing the camouflage of the rabbit, making it vulnerable and making it stand out in the environment. Now the trade-offs of camouflage is that while they reduce the detectability to pred predators, it will also cost them and it will cost them energy through molting and shedding. So they will molt their fur and they will then need to produce another coat of fur in a different colour. And essentially the same with those with ex uh, those with scales and exoskeletons, in which case they will then need to shed it in order to have new colours or to have vibrant colours in case the colours wear. Because the production 
of those specific pigments is very costly to the body systems. Now, the second primary defense is aposematism. Now, it's a big word, and many of you may know what it is, but not by this term. This is when a brightly colored animal is telling others, so telling other animals, that it is dangerous. And this is done in order to reduce predation. Now, predators will encounter this prey for the first time, and when it encounters this prey, it will experience a negative effect, whether it being poisoning or with a stinger. Those are just two examples. Now, this negative effect will learn them in order to avoid the to avoid the predators and pay attention to the warning signal on them, thus reducing predation of the overall species. Now, ask yourself this: How should the advanced how should the density of an aposematic species affect the effectiveness of this mechanism as, predator, as a predator avoidance strategy? So when looking at this, just give it a quick thought, I'm not going to tell you the answer, um, but just give it a thought. How would the density of this change if the abundance of these types of species increase? Now, the last primary mechanism we're going to look at is mimicry. Now, there are different types of mimicry which we'll be going over, and this is a form called frequency dependent selection. Amongst these is the malarian mimics. Now, malarian mimics look like other species with similar warning colors, and this is unprofitable. An example of this is the Heliconus genus and they are commonly known as brush-footed butterflies. They have avian predators, so birds, but they are also distasteful and have a convergence of colorations. Now, now we're going to look at a different form of mimicry. This is um, Batesian mimicry and it's known as a parasitic benefit whereas the malaria whereas malarian mimics have a more neutral benefit and malarian mimics like the wasp as an example have an honest signal so an honest signal meaning they have a negative they have a way of inducing a negative effect so, keeping moths as the moths, wasps as the example, they have a stinger like the bee, which they mimic. Now, Batesian mimics are very different from this because they have a deceptive signal. So, using hoverfly as the example, they mimic the yellow black pattern of wasps and bees, but Hoverflies are harmless, whereas bees who are also bees who are the beginners of this pattern are of course harmful. And then you have the bees mimics being the wasps who are also harmful as they both have stingers. Now this is an issue because if a predator encounters a hoverfly first, it will not receive that negative effect. Now because they won't receive that negative effect, they won't see the black and yellow pattern as a warning sign. So this means that if that same predator then tries to predate a wasp or a bee who then can produce that negative effect, when that same predator tries to predate a wasp or a bee, it will receive that negative effect. But the bee and wasp will still be predated, which means it will still be killed off. Now, this means that Batesian mimics, inc when increased in abundance, the aposematism doesn't, doesn't become as effective as a deterrent as it needs to be in order to protect both the wasp, the 
the um, Malarian Mimic as well as the B who is the originator of the warning signal. Now okay so that is everything for primary defences defenses we are now moving on to secondary defenses um, now these mechanisms are to reduce the attack and capture now there are three forms of secondary defenses and they are mechanical chemical and behavioral however we can narrow it down into specific examples and I'm going to cover these as the escape mechanism, the startle display, and armor. Now, first, we're going to look at the escape mechanism. Now, this isn't a popular mechanism. Not all animals have it, of course. And it's only really found in insects. So, an example of an animal which performs this would be a springtail, but aphids also perform this very behavior. Now, springtails will quite literally jump out of their skins when a predator comes to attack them. They will do this so that the predator will go after their shed exoskeleton while they themselves have time to then escape from that predator. Now, aphids have a different escape mechanism, um, but as a, it is an escape mechanism nonetheless. When aphids encounter a predator and a predator tries to predate them they will do what is called a drop response this is when the aphid will quite literally drop off the stem or the foliage they are on and just drop to the ground that is their method of escape it puts a completely large distance especially for their size away from their predator allowing them to escape completely now the second is the startle display. Now this is a simple mechanism and is found in animals such as the eyed hawk moth. Now this moth is brown, it's quite large but still is a moth, it's rather small. Now when it's seen by a predator, and a predator begins to enclose the distance, it will open its wings to reveal two large big red pattern on the underwings. Now these will represent eyes. Now this is to make the moth appear much larger and more intimidating almost as if a predator in itself. Now this will then deter the predator away preventing the predator from even attacking them. Now the last mechanism is one I believe people have knowledge of themselves and they have probably seen quite a lot and that is armour. Now you'll find this in countless species including one of my favourite animals being the pangolin but you also see it in beetles and tortoises and so many other different animals because armour is a common is a common mechanism which will prevent the capture of the animal. Now, armour is slightly different from the two because it doesn't prevent the animal from attacking it, but instead prevents them from capturing it. So, you may get a predator who will attack this animal. So, if you get a big cat attacking a pangolin or a predator attacking a tortoise, it will use its armour in order to protect itself. So, using the pangolin as an example, the pangolin will roll up into a ball, in which case it will have its armour on the outside. So it will prevent the predator from getting to the unarmoured parts of the body, mainly the underbelly, in order to kill in order to kill the pangolin. So due to it not being able to get to the unprotected part it is unable to kill and thereby eat it which means it will use unnecessary energy trying to get to it now this is of course not a perfect thing because predators are occasionally able to break through the armor or 
divert its pattern in order to null the effects of the armor, such as unrolling the pangolin through brute strength. Now, that is everything I'm going to cover today. Um, thank you for being here. I hope you now have a better understanding of predators and how prey avoid them. And if you like this video, please give it a like. I post videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If you have any suggestions for a topic you wish for me to cover, put it down in the comment section below. I believe that is all I'm going to be covering on predation for the time being. But if there's anything else about predation you wish for me to cover, please leave it down below. And consider subscribing and ring that bell to stay notified as to when I upload my videos. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye guys.